What's going on guys? Welcome back. So thank you guys for joining me in what should be the very last episode of Metalwork on our 68 Charger. You heard that right. After 18 months, the Metalwork is finally, finally coming to a close. Those of you guys that have been following the channel since the beginning know that pretty much, with the exception of the roof and the firewall, damn near every other part on this car has been replaced with brand new quality sheet metal panels from our friends over at AMD. Now, Got a couple little things left to do that I'm going to show you guys in today's episode. We've got some drip rails to do. We've also got a um, little bit of rust repair here on the inside, kind of up in here where our uh, door jams are. We've got that to wrap up. We've got our rear deck filler to put in. And also, you know, never throw away old parts, guys. Keep this stuff around. You know, again, you can kind of see the state of what this uh, rear deck filler panel is in, but our trunk hinges and our trunk support pieces are all in good shape. So we're gonna transfer those onto our brand new AMD rear deck filler. Um, gotta get that in. We've gotta fabricate some, uh, you know, the flanges that go here from the deck filler down to our wider wheelhouses. So, and that's pretty much it, guys. And, you know, I'm hoping by the end of this episode, I'm gonna have it up on a rotisserie, flipped upside down, and ready to get started on all the work that needs to be done on the bottom side of this car. So going to really take my time, make sure that we detail the bottom of the car. I want it to look just about as good as the top of the car is going to. So that's a, you know, a huge step forward for this car. All right, guys. So before I get started, I did want to say real quick, if you're watching this video and you have not done so yet, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, comment below on the things that you really, really want to see with this build or any other DIY videos that you guys would like to see with metal work, body work, paint work, etc. Really, really helps me out. So with that, let's jump straight into these drip rails here. Now, you know, with this car, there's really not that much original DNA left with this car, but you know, panels that do clean up like this, okay, or even on the inside here, really, really no rust on the inside of where our drip rails are. Now, you know, anything that you see here in well through primer has pretty much been replaced. You know, why not leave that there? So got a beautiful piece here from AMD and uh, it's gonna save me a lot of work, a lot of time for sure. But uh, you know, all I did went ahead, lined up my the front of the drip rail here with the top, laid it across the back, made a quick mark on that, and I think I'm just gonna go ahead and section this rear piece in here. Saved me a lot of time, and again, why not? The metal's in really good shape. So with that, let's grab the grinder, let's get this piece fit up, weld it up, and uh, do the same thing on the other side.
right, so I got our drip rails fit up and overall turned out really, really nice. Now, before I show you that, look at how beautiful that lead seam looks. I can't stop looking at it. Anyways, so got our drip rails fit up. It's really, really important, guys, that as you're doing this, make sure that you fit your trim at the exact same time. Um, especially, you know, if you're going to section this kind of like I did, um, you know, you can definitely tweak it one way or the other. And you want to make sure that everything lines up, you know, really, really nice with your piece of trim here. You want to make sure that you've got a nice, even reveal all the way down this entire gap here. You know, this is going to get seam sealed across the back side of there. But, uh, you know, overall, guys, especially with the, you know, with the, uh, the chrome on there, or the stainless, excuse me, you really, really can't tell at all that that was sectioned. So on the inside of here, got a little bit of cleanup left to do on the welds, but not too big of a deal. Um, you probably noticed the uh, the trim on this thing does look, kind of look like hammered ass. I uh, <laughs> had a hard time getting it off, so I might have to replace this. So if you got any laying around, definitely let me know. But uh, let's look at the other side real quick. Turned out just about the same. Um, you know, really, really tried to blend this the best that I can. So that way you really can't even tell, you know, where that... Um, you know where the two pieces end up coming together um, but again you know nice even gap all the way up and around so not too bad of a job guys um, you know kind of putting it off just due to parts and getting the parts to the house so next gonna attack this deck filler here probably the biggest panel left to do on the car and uh, you know like I said I've been lugging this thing around this old panel here around for a while can't wait to cut this up uh, and get our hinges off and get this thing out of here. So I don't know how many times I've cut myself on this sharp edge here, but took a grinder real quick. Um, just barely touched this for, you know, all but a few seconds and exposed my original spot welds here on this side, you know, three on this side, couple on the other, um, but not too bad. So I did push the pieces together, took a measurement between, you know, corner to corner, as well as took a bunch of pictures, you know, just like where this tab, for example, you know, falls on this little bracket piece here, you know, kind of where on the uh, the transition that this piece fits. But as long as my spacing is exactly the same on the inside to inside, and then also, you know, there is some tolerance here for, uh, you know, kind of tweaking the hood hinges a little bit if you're just a touch off. So not too big of a deal, but let's go ahead. Let's get this deck filler off, get that ready to, uh, to weld these pieces on and uh, yeah, drill out our plug welds, fit it up, weld it up and get it in the car. Let's get it done.
All right guys, wanted to share a real quick tech tip with you. Now, at this stage, I've got the top of the window channel here cut completely out, and this is where you take a piece of L channel, use your shrinker stretcher tool, make it fit, you know, make it fit the, the curvature of the roof skin as well. But I broke mine, it's a Harbor Freight unit, I need to get a new one, and uh, of course, I have this one last piece of window channel before we finish this job up. So what I'm actually gonna do is take two pieces of metal, weld them together, and make it fit. So the first thing that I did, this is 18 gauge steel, ended up just taking a nice piece, bending it to the shape of the roof skin this way, and using a Sharpie and just tracing along the edge of my roof skin. So I've got a piece that's bent that way, and then I've also got a piece that shows you the shape of the, the top of the roof skin. So once I got that piece to fit really nice like that, take that, put it up against another piece of metal here, and uh, trace that out, cut it, and we're left with that. So from here, what we're gonna do, we're gonna weld it on the inside, weld it on the outside, grind it down, and you know tweak it a little bit more, but at the end of the day, we're gonna have a piece that fits really, really nice in there. And weld that in and you'll never know that it was ever done so you don't always need the fanciest tools to get the job done sometimes you just got to make do with what you got so yeah little tip let's get this done
Alrighty, you guys, so that's gonna bring us to the end of this video. And unfortunately, the car is not upside down, okay, like I planned on. I got the rotisserie, got everything set up. Um, the front here, pretty straightforward. I went ahead, opened up some holes on this. We can, you know, put some bolts in there, attach it right to my um, rotisserie that way in the front, no problem. The back is a little bit more problematic and I'm actually gonna have to fabricate something here to, to mount because what I'd like to do is put something like a plate on the inside of the back with two holes here and then also to come around bolt into the bottom of here and then also it's got to have a pocket to fit either on the inside of that or bolt to the side of that so um, gonna take a little bit more research to uh, to get that together and definitely some time to fabricate the parts needed to put it together but aside from that guys as you as you saw you know got my drip rails done got all the little pieces here and there done no I have not done the rear turn signals yet Honestly, I'm a troll and I'm gonna hold out to the last minute because I know it drives you guys crazy. But for the rest of it, it's pretty much ready to go on the rotisserie. And from that point, the plan is, gonna go ahead and start dressing out everything on the bottom here because none of these welds have really been ground down at all. So I'm gonna clean it all up, strip it all down, put it in epoxy, seam seal it, and undercoat it. So, and as you can see, just how much new metal's on this car. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> so, but uh, if you guys have stuck around for this long in this video, you've probably been here a while. And uh, unfortunately I've had to make you guys wait a while for this video. So I think I started filming this about the beginning or middle of May and uh, it's taken me about two months to get through it. Just been going through some personal stuff on my end and uh, you know, hopefully you'll be able to get a little bit more time, get out here and uh, keep this build moving forward. Of course, we've still got a Rakuta build going on and uh, a whole lot more, um, you know, hopefully that I can show you guys. So but with that guys, stay tuned. I promise it's not gonna be another two months till the next update. So with that, I'll see you next time. Yeah.